Good day. Yes? I was wondering if you might be able to spare some lantern oil. I don't have much to spare, lass. Paraffin is as rare as hen's teeth in these parts. How much coin do you have? None, I'm afraid. If you're in a bind, I can trade you a small amount. A trade, you say? Aye. What can I trade you for some lantern oil? Surprise me. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. I can walk through there. Good day. Yes? What can I trade you for some lantern oil? Surprise me. Thanks for your time. Aye. Speak to you later. Alas, it is not mine to take. This is where I dug up Jane's ragdoll. The moors stretch into the distance. I don't wish to wander aimlessly. Splendid. I've managed to extract it in one piece. Thank you. 
Would you trade some of your paraffin for this fossilized ammonite, Mr. Crozier? Now then, tis a beauty, that. It looks familiar. I'll take it off your hands. Wonderful. Let me fetch some paraffin from inside. There you are. Thank you, Mr. Crozier. My lantern is fueled and ready for action. <laughs> right, let's put this lantern to good use. Jane, come out at once. Jane! Silly, what are you doing in that smelly old badger's hole? You were in there. No, I weren't. Yes, you were. Not true. I was hiding behind that tree over there. I got bored of waiting for you. So where can I find Hobbs Barrow? Go north from the church graveyard, up the hill. You'll see some muddy fields on the horizon. That's Mr. Bryden's farm. Hobbs Barrow is there. Don't tell any grown-ups I told you. And thanks for getting Myrtle back. My pleasure. Thank you, Jane. You've been a great help. As I trudged through the barren moors, with only the odd sheep for company, I reflected upon my visit to Bewley thus far. The enigmatic Mr. Shoulder and his puzzling disappearance. The townsfolk of Bewley, who had made it as difficult as they could for me to find Hobbs Barrow. The suspicion, the wariness in their eyes. Only now I know it was actually fear. In the end, it was the innocence of a child, young Jane, that condemned me to my fate. I've no desire to wander the furrows. What do you want? My name is Thomasina Bateman. Mr. Bryden, I presume. Aye. What do you want, lass? 
I understand Hobbs Barrow is located on your land. Oh, well, yes. Why do you ask? I am an antiquarian, Mr. Bryden. I'm writing a volume on the Barrows of England. Oh, I suppose you'll be wanting to dig about it. If at all possible, Mr. Bryden. I was invited to Bewley by Mr. Leonard Shoulder, who told me such an excavation would be possible. Leonard Shoulder? Ha! I haven't seen him in years. The last I heard he were on death's door. There's to be no more digging there, lass. Not since it went so badly last time. Was there a previous excavation of Hobbs Barrow? Aye. My brother dug it up. Must have been, what, 25 years ago? You see, whatever he found inside, well, it drove him mad. Oh? Aye. I moved back here to look after him. Poor bastard hanged himself not long after. I... I'm sorry, Mr. Bryden. That's terrible. Aye. Time passes, but it were an awful thing. What did your brother find? Samuel. Samuel were his name. Sorry. What did Samuel find in the barrow? I don't know. But something went wrong. Afterward, he could barely speak. You couldn't make out a word like... That must have been hard. He lost a hand in that excavation too, you know. Goodness me, how? I try hard not to speculate on what might have happened, lass. I'd see him disappear into that barrow, dragging timber in with him. You'd hear him hammering away for hours. I offered him help, but he'd have none of it. Soon enough, he blocked the entrance off. To look at it now, you'd never know the thing we dug up. The landers reclaimed it. You haven't seen Mr. Shoulder for some time? I hear about him now and then, but it must be a good few years since I set eyes on him. He hasn't been here to visit Hobbs Barrow? Not to my knowledge. I heard he's beset by ailments. Don't leave his home often. Hmm. How odd. I assumed he'd spoken to you about my visit. Not at all. Who else was involved in the excavation? Two others, I believe. Outsiders, perhaps. I can't say for sure. I think they left town pretty swiftly afterwards. I lived in Bakewell at the time. I only moved back here to look after Samuel. I took over the farm when he passed away. I see. What can you tell me about your farm? Samuel's fair to side. We're a fortunate family. The soil is fertile here. Crops grow without too much trouble. All the other farmers around here raise livestock, even Lord Panswick. We grow up feed for them. Most fortunate, Mr. Bryden. Tell me about yourself, Mr. Bryden. I live here with my wife. I might be long in tooth, but I can still run this farm without too much help. Is your wife home? She's out in fields, lass, pulling weeds. The curse of such fertile soil. <laughs> Forty years we've been married. I couldn't do it without her, you see. How splendid. Aye, my wife is a fine woman. Are you married, lass? No, no. I've had my fair share of proposals, Mr. Bryden, but that's not the life for me. Marriage is an important institution. You'll find a man one day. Hmm. I manage rather well without one, Mr. Bryden. What can you tell me of Lord Panswick? He keeps us going. Most of our crops go to feed his animals. What is he like? Oh, I've hardly laid eyes on him. He sends his workers here to pick up the crops. I see. You say Mr. Shoulder is at death's door. What exactly ails him? I'm unsure. It's just what I've heard. I wouldn't want to speculate on matters that are not my business. Mr. Bryden, may I please have your permission to excavate Hobbs Barrow? No. Have you not been listening, lass? Samuel found something in there that's best left to rot. No digging here, lass. Wouldn't you like to find out more about what Samuel found in there? Perhaps. But Samuel boarded up that barrow for a reason. You don't want to tempt the same fate, lass. Perhaps I can at least see Hobbs Barrow. Hmm. I suppose you've come a long way to be here, lass. All the way from London, Mr. Bryden. Hmm. 
Have you any proof of all you've told me? You wish to see proof of what, Mr. Bryden? I can't let any Tom, Dick or Harry wander around me fields. What proof have you of your claims? Thanks for your time. Ta-ra now. Here is proof that Mr. Shoulder invited me to Bewley in order to excavate Hobbs Barrow. Lennon making bold promises, I see. Don't make me regret this, but yes, you can have a look at it. Thank you. Any road, once you've set your eyes on it, you won't be wanting outdo with it. The place gives one a queer feeling. So where can I find it? Through that gate to your left. Just head straight across the top to the field there. After ten minutes or so, you'll see Barra, set on a hill ahead. Thank you again, Mr. Bryden. I really do appreciate it. This is not mine to take. <laughs> Easy girl. I'm not fond of goats at the best of times, but this one seems particularly disagreeable. Probably should have brought my umbrella. AR. I haven't a clue what that could be referring to. I don't wish to carve anything into the rock. Finally, here it is. Hobbs Barrow. Indeed, a barrow of a most unusual rectangular form. I've not seen something like this since West Kennet Long Barrow. Yes, this shall make a fine entry for my book. What secrets do you conceal, I wonder? in good time. That smell, earthy and sweet. You can open your eyes now, Thomasina. Come. Are you ready for your first excavation? Yes, Daddy. Capital. Make sure you remember everything I've taught you. I have a feeling you might find something special. How exciting. I'll be watching from the steps, my little bird. Good luck. Thank you, Daddy. Thomasina, we don't excavate with our bare hands. No 
the treasure's here. Nothing here. Daddy, I found the treasure! Look! Well done, little bird. Your first successful excavation. That urn you're holding is very old and precious. Take good care of it, all right? I will, Daddy. I promise. I do have a feeling there is something exceptional to be discovered here. I must gain Mr. Bryden's permission to excavate. I do have a feeling that I must gain... Darkness falls quickly here. I should make my way back to the inn. is well out of reach. Time for bed. Tomorrow I shall convince Mr. Bryden to allow me to begin my excavation. Miss Bateman. How are you? Tired. Can I buy you a drink? One won't hurt. Excellent. I feel bad about what happened last night. I'm sorry I can't remember it. That's all right, Mr. Tillett. Alcohol can do all sorts of damage to one's memory. I was thinking that maybe if we had another drink tonight, I might remember what happened. I'm not sure that's logical. But worth trying? I don't need any further convincing. Take your seat, Miss Bateman. I shall return with the goods. To Leonard's shoulder. Wherever he may be. I've been meaning to ask you something. Yes? Why did Leonard's shoulder ask you to dig up Hobbs Barrow? Despite his disappearing act the previous evening, not to mention his questionable sobriety, I decided Mr. Tillett was to be my ally. I spoke again of Mr. Shoulder's letter his proposed excavation and my status as an antiquarian and barrow digger. 
He was fascinated and quite excited at the prospect of meeting the soon-to-be author of a real-life book. You must find all manner of riches on your digs. Barrow digging is not all success, Mr. Tillett. Often I'll come across the likeliest of sights steeped in promise. We set to work with shovel and pick and all the other barrow opening paraphernalia you could imagine. Every stone carefully taken down, every shovel full of earth put dutifully through the sieve, and we find nothing. Or you may find a miserable remnant of animal bone or a shard of pottery hardly to be recognized from the peat in which it decayed. Sometimes it's as if some Neolithic humorist prepared an elaborate practical joke for your special benefit. It still sounds much more exciting than spending your day sitting in England's most remote railway station. <sighs> Are you all right, Mr. Tillett? I've had another argument with Agnes. Your wife? Aye. She didn't want me coming to the plough tonight. Truth is, I've been drinking my life away since my mother passed. Oh, that's terrible. I'm sorry for your loss. You're kind, Miss Bateman. Thank you. It's been a year since the old girl left us. She had a horrible end. Wasting away, day by day. Consumption got her. She went out but bones by the end. I can't get the image out of my mind. She were everything to me. I'm so sorry. I apologize for going on, Miss Bateman. It's not appropriate. Don't worry, Mr. Tillett. I appreciate your openness. I used to love going for walks out in the moor, my mother and I, ever since I were a little one. She'd get a tear in her eye as she looked out upon it. She loved this land. I asked Mr. Crozier to build a bench, which we've erected at a favorite lookout spot on the moors. Margaret's Lookout, we called it. Aye. That's a beautiful tribute. Aye. If you take a seat there, do keep her in your thoughts, won't you? Of course, Mr. Tillett. I can relate in some manner. My father had an accident when I was very young. He's still alive, but he can neither move nor speak. He spends his entire life bedbound and incapable of communicating or looking after himself in any way. How dreadful. He was a barrow digger himself, an antiquarian of some renown. He taught me so much, even though I was so young. I think writing this book is my way of carrying on his work. It helps me reclaim those earlier memories of him. And I visit him often to tell him all about my excavations. Can he hear you? I've no idea. The doctors aren't sure. I'd do anything to make him better, Mr. Tillett. I'd do anything to bring him back to the man he was. I am in a state of suspended mourning for a man caught between life and death. Dreadful. Just dreadful. We all have our weaknesses. Mine just happens to be my father. And what of your mother? A cold woman. We haven't talked in quite some time. I think she blamed me for my father's accident somehow. You were but a child. Indeed. She thus saw it fit that a governess should raise me as she spent her life grieving for my father. Well then, I propose a toast. A toast to what? A shared sense of loss. I'll toast to that, Arthur. Now then, enough of this wallowing. Let us be merry. Another round. I really shouldn't. But I did. And another after that. And another. The frustrations of my visit to Bewley slipped away with each swill of Stanley's finest ale. We had great fun that night, Mr. Tillett and I. I treasure the memory. Go on, then. Let's hear those pipes. I uh, mustn't. Sing the song. You're incorrigible. Please. You'll make a sad man happy. Oh, all right, then. Clasps, celts, and arrowheads I'll try to claw within my clutch. And if a shield I should espy, I'll vow there ne'er was such. With popish tricks and relics rare, the priests their flocks do gull. In casting out the earth take care, 
Huzzah! I've found a skull!